seen two we've seen three we could see four wide it's a breaking opportunity into turn number one but the first thing that's going to happen is they're going to get on the gas hard out of the final turn 14 coming to the green flag to start a new tradition in Indianapolis two by two rocketing down the front stretch all the way into turn number one here's William Byron he'll get the jump and grab the lead Chase Briscoe will come along for the ride they're four wide just outside of the top ten now they got to funnel down to three wide down to two wide battle shaping up for third among teammates you got Elliott there in the nine you've got Larson there in the five it's a two car breakaway let's see what happens right here in turn number five and six Byron will lead them through front half of the field through cleanly at least as they race the way up the back straightaway. Briscoe is right on your leader Byron down the back straightaway into turn 70 looks a little low here not close enough to make a pass further on back we're three wide four wide contact the 19 of Truex the 42 of Jastain 99 all these guys getting together just a little bit there through turn seven now through eight nine and ten the switchback changing direction everybody through cleanly. And we saw a few laps ago, side by side battle right here. Denny Hamlin drives in the corner. He has a decision to make. See that great big blue and white curb right there? He knows he can't hit it. So he just hung a left, just got to stay off of it. But when he did, it lost tons of track position. That was a smart thing to do, though. Kelly, what do you have on Truex? Yeah, contact early in this race has resulted in a tire rub, a little bit of body damage for Martin Truex Jr., a right front tire rub. So his crew chief, James Small, has just called him down to pit road. We're going to have to try to clear that body contact from the tire and get him some fresh good news. This is the number 33 of Austin Sidrick, the 22-year-old out of Mooresville, North Carolina. A winner yesterday in the Xfinity Series right here, just deep into turn one. Looks like he has to get on the brakes a little harder than he wants behind Denny Hamlin. Either wheel hops or locks up the rear tires, spinning it out. No damage, but a lot of track position loss. Here come the leaders back into turn number one. Eight laps are complete, and the front four are still the same. You've got Briscoe in the 14, Byron in the 24, Elliott in the nine, and I would say the only change in that top four is Kyle Larson losing touch with the front three. He was on Elliott's back bumper there for a while, but Dale, as these laps start to click off, we're starting to see Kyle Larson fade just a tad. But slowly but surely, Elliott is starting to creep in on these front two. And you know the laps yesterday in the Xfinity Series race are helping Chase Elliott tremendously. Seems like he got in a better and better groove as that race went on. Here's the tent car. We've got some major damage to the right front. Headlight, and there's the contact. Look at the damage. Look how much that damage that car, and the seven car of Corey LaJoy. So Eric Amarola, yeah, he's on pit road already to repair some of that damage and change the tires. Tyler Reddick to the inside of the 34 here. He's going to be on the outside of turn eight. This is for the lead and the stage win. Coming to one to go, Tyler Reddick needs these points. If you look at the billboard there, he's in second place. These will be some great stage points, but Austin Dillon is sitting in third place, gaining stage points as well with the position he holds. Tyler Reddick right now is going to try to hang a right. Outbreak by the McDowell into turn 11. Turn 12, I'm sorry, he does it. Gets right by McDowell, coming to get this stage win. Good aggressive move by Reddick. He's going to have one more lap to go, though, if he wants the stage win. Again, these are the top two. Reddick. And McDowell. McDowell already has a win. He won the Daytona 500 to start the 2021 season. And now Reddick trying to make it into the playoffs. Out front, one to go in stage one. And as we watch this battle, pit road is closed. We won't see any more cars make the trip down pit road until the yellow comes out. Tyler Reddick would love to get those points, but let's not underestimate Michael McDowell's desire either. He's in the playoffs. He's well down the pecking order, and he can use every point he can get his hands on. Slide the tires there just a bit is Tyler Reddick but so many points sitting in front of him and that's what he needs right now. He's in a big points battle with his teammate Austin Dillon. Tyler Reddick will come out of turn 14. He'll see the green and white checkered flag. He grabs his second stage win of 2021 and the first stage win on the road course for the Cup Series. The Geico restart zone. Keselowski and Elliott up front. Stage two is underway. 
knew the jump was important, and he went right away and got a great acceleration to at least take the pressure off into turn one. And look at the battle behind him. Question is, how long can Brad Keselowski hang on to the lead? They'll gobble them up quick coming into one. Brad will hang on to the lead. They are two and three wide further back. Everybody's got those elbows up now, trying to get through this end of the racetrack. Here they come through the left-hander. Make that the right-hander. That's turn three. And Brad Keselowski, his plate is full right now. He looks in the rearview mirror. And William Byron in attack mode through turns five and turn six. Down the back straightaway, William Byron. Waiting on Brad to fade to, to the right there, so he'll open up the opportunity here in the braking zone. And here comes the 24 car. We saw the Chevrolet forces it down to the inside. They're side by side, heading into turn eight. Brad on the inside is going to take the lead back. Williams going to give it to him. Cut him a break right there, but that allows Chase Elliott into the fight. Chase to the inside of the 24, coming out of turn 10. Chase Elliott took full advantage of Keselowski, kind of holding up the 24. William just couldn't make anything happen on the outside. Now they're going to be side by side in this very difficult breaking zone. Chase Elliott underneath Keselowski. William Byron pushing him. Troy Logano wants to get into the fun. Chase Elliott fighting for the lead now. Brad Keselowski has it, but here comes Elliott to the inside. Before they come out onto the front stretch, he's trying to make the pass. Up through the gears, they go again. Chase Elliott trying to take the lead away from Keselowski. Keselowski moves to the right. Elliott slides all the way down to the pit wall. And now back up front, Elliott's up front of the field. Side by side for the lead at Indianapolis. Brad is trying to stay with him. They're three wide with the brakes locked up on Kyle Larson in the five. It's Elliott to the lead in the nine. Keslowski to second, and his teammate, Joey Logano, is trying to come along for the ride as well. Here's Logano trying to get a twofer. He's got to back away. He almost clips Brad. What a battle for second, third, and fourth as they leave six and head to the back throwaway. Oh, Byron's off course there a little bit. Just offline pretty badly. That's going to cost him several spots down this back straightaway. Kyle Busch, who's climbed through this field from a terrible starting position, goes by the 24. There's the 14, the 41. Byron losing so many spots just being offline a little bit through that kink, a very critical part of the racetrack. Chase Elliott leads and driving away. Tyler Reddick in that eight car, remember he stayed out to get that stage win. Find himself back up to 16th right now. Good job getting some spots. Trying to take advantage of Keselowski on those old tires. Drives underneath, he clears him. Oh, we got contact here. Matty D, Christopher Bell off the track. Cars flying by him on the outside. Two drivers mad at each other. All the other ones are happy. Go flying by. Now here's the contact. Basically, it's to your left, the 21 gets in deep. I can't really tell how the 20 got in there next to him, but either way, both cars off in, into the grass. Trouble turn one, Ross Chastain around right in front of Denny Hamlin, puts up a huge cloud of smoke, and everybody's trying to get through. They will have success, but Ross Chastain in the middle of that pack of traffic went for a spin and a heads up piece of driving for about a dozen drivers as they tried to find their way around the spinning car of Ross Chastain. There you see it down in the corner, just gets in there a little bit too hard, locks it up, spins it around. Man, when these other cars see somebody in trouble, they jump all over it. We're still under green, but a big hit for Brad Keselowski. Yeah, Brad Keselowski, I looked up coming out of turn 11, and here he was coming backwards toward me, backed it in the wall, big heavy impact, rear tires off the ground. It's major damage on the two car. They were struggling on old tires, just didn't work out. And then we saw Kurt Busch have to get on pit road. Here's why, look at Ross Chastain and Kurt. Kurt just had to get slowed down and flat spotted that right front get into turn one. Battle for 10, but like Junior said, this could be for the win. Can he take advantage of that slower traffic? There he is! Gonna try to drive underneath him. He's got the position right now. Three wide though off of turn 11. Real tight, they cleared that out to that lap car. Now will Kyle Larson drive it in there far. Got a great opportunity to take the lead right here. Kyle gives Chase plenty of room. Chase is going to fight back on the inside. Good hard racing, but respectful racing. Rubbing each other a little bit. Kyle Larson back with the preferred spot on the bottom. Kyle Larson just in front of Chase Elliott now as they come back to the finish line of stage two. It was Tyler Reddick who got the win.
but what a battle between Larson and Elliott. We are going to see this all afternoon. The final stage from the Brickyard and the road course for the Cup Series. Larson, Elliott side by side for the lead. Drag racing towards the end of the front straightaway. Here they come. Who's going to get to turn one first? Is it going to be Chase? Is it going to be Kyle? Kyle's got preference. That's Larson into five, and he'll beat Elliott into the corner. You've got Elliott now. That'll fall back to second. Right now in third, it's another teammate from Hendrick Motorsports. That would be William Byron in the 24. They're on back. They begin to stack it up double wide. Here they are through the right-hander, turn number four, as Larson not only has he grabbed the lead, but he's starting to pull away, leaving turn six. 22 missed apex just a little bit. The 11 closes in. The right left-handers. He misses it again. We got a car around over here, the 33, exiting turn seven. Austin Sender gets spun out. He gets it right back on track. Little contact with Kurt Busch right there. Kurt got into the left rear quarter panel. And we'll see if this will be the time when Hamlin will come to pit road. How long would you stay out, Steve? Well, he's already lost quite a bit of time to new tires. I think if you're Denny Hamlin right here, now your plan is to run long enough that when you put your tires on, you have the freshest tires. In case there is a caution, you can then stay on the racetrack. As we see, he turns left again, won't come to pit road, Marty. I think that's Chris Gabehart's plan. I think in his mind, I can't beat Kyle Larson and Cliff Daniels right now. So I'm just going to run as long as I can, have fresh tires on at the end. So he left him out. In fact, just a moment ago, he said, how's the car handling? He didn't say we're pitting in this many laps. They haven't talked about pitting at all yet. So right now, there's what, one, two, three cars that have kind of stayed out playing this strategy, the 11 being one of them. Denny Hamlin on much newer tires. Remember, he stayed out. Waited to pit, and he is a solid second faster than the field. You just heard him say, hey, if this thing goes green, we can get to third. That's his mission right now. Push really hard. Well, you mentioned, you know, if it stays green. I mean, the question could be 10 laps over, easily have it yellow. It doesn't take very much. You see right there, Ross Chastain up over the curbs. Oh, big piece of debris. That is a huge piece of debris down there between five and six. We'll see if NASCAR feels that's too close to the track or not. It looks like it's gone. You think it's far enough to the left, but look at all the tire tracks. That's definitely the racing surface. And there is a caution. And as I was just mentioning it, now what do you do? Fresh tires or track position? Green flag back in there. Right away, De Benedetto trying to block. Larson on the inside makes it three wide. He'll make it three wide, trying for second here as they go into one. And they're three wide for the lead. Briscoe comes flying into the inside of Hamlin. Kurt Busch has to give, a, give way. Hamlin is away with the lead. Briscoe now to the number two position, and they're stacked up there. William Byron's on the move. He'll jump to the outside as well. So right now you've got Hamlin in the 11, Briscoe in the 14, and William Byron gets by Kyle Larson in the 24. He'll take third, and they're bumping and banging and grinding. And one car's around, coming out of turn number six. He'll spin it to the inside. That is Martin Truex Jr., who gets spun to the exit of turn six. Down here in turn seven, though, we remain green. Larson is now on the outside in turn eight. Through turn nine, he's going to have the position. He'll take it away from his teammate, William Byron. Now he tries to set sail, get clear of Byron, and go after the leaders. Great battle right there with teammates. Kyle Larson now has got to run these top two down. Denny Hamlin trying to get away from Chase Briscoe. Chase Briscoe has had a really good day. All kinds of issues later in this race, though, has not been able to break the way he wants to. We saw him a little bit of lock up right there. Can he get momentum on Denny Hamlin and make a run down the front straightaway? Coming to you, Rick. The 11 of Denny Hamlin trying to hold off Chase Briscoe. Martrex Jr. is rolling, so the caution won't come out. Here comes Briscoe for the lead. He goes to the inside of Hamlin. The Indiana boy trying to win again at Indianapolis Motor Speedway, trying to take the lead away from the 11. And a playoff berth hangs in the balance for Chase Briscoe. If he wins, he's in. He'll lock up the right front. Hamlin goes wide. Briscoe with the advantage, but Hamlin powers back to the inside. Hamlin goes back to the lead in turn three. Here's Briscoe right behind him, and Kyle Larson begins to loom large in these rear view mirrors for the two that lead the way through four, now into five and turn six. All of that contact between the two leaders is allowed. That's it. Well, the 24 is spinning. The 24 is oh, There's a multiple cars into the wall here. They're 
must be oil or some kind of fluid down on the racetrack right there. In turn. We got car more cars coming in. William Byron is reporting that the curb came up. He hit the curb in the 24. Yeah, the curbing is coming up, and that's what everyone hit when they were coming through there in turn six. The curbing comes up, catches a bunch of the cars, the front ends of the cars, and oh, numerous cars are destroyed. Take a look at what happened to Daniel Suarez's car. Looks like he gets turned by the 20. You can already see some cars having trouble with that curb and debris going everywhere. Truex gets spun around right here. He's riding on top of the roof cam. Lifting out of the gas, I assume, because he's seeing the debris and uncertain about what was in front of him. Now here is the, watch the 24 car here. Boom, destroys the splitter. The car just spins out. Everyone behind him piles in and it ain't over. More cars are gonna come sliding into this because you're committed, once you're committed, once you're committed to that kink, you can't avoid the calamity right there. Be a good angle to see how the rest of the field. Look at the 22 destroyed his car over the curb. See how the rest of these guys get piled in here. Oh, more cars getting destroyed going through turn five over that curb. Unbelievable. Now, Steve, I got to ask you, why would the why would the Cup cars have more trouble with that particular curb? when we didn't have this type of issue yesterday with Xfinity cars. You know, Dale, I was wondering that as we've seen them repair this curve. I didn't know if it was just wear and tear. Remember, we had an entire race yesterday with the Xfinity, and now the Cup have finally broken the parts loose. I didn't know if it was the speed of the Cup cars. I mean, when you look at, you know, weight and size, look at the destruction, just car after car jumps that curb and spins through the grass. Heavy contact with the 22. So good to see Joey Logano get out, but Junior, you, you know, these cars don't have frame heights. They can run much lower. Look at the destruction at the front of that car. But I, I really think it's wear and tear. I don't believe that these could be any harder on it than an Xfinity car, because even though they have frame heights, they ride on the ground. Um, so it could be that. It could just be the amount of cars over the course of the day. Rick, you pointed out, we have seen multiple times this curb be repaired today. And whatever that repair was, was not enough to make it through the entire race. Well, I wonder, uh, the Xfinity guys have some rules with the bump stops they're allowed to run, and limitations where there's it's a bit more open with the uh, Cup Series competitors, uh, and maybe the, the Xfinity cars aren't quite as low at that particular point. Red. Yeah, also, also, guys, that splitter, we've seen the splitter underneath, underneath the curb multiple times a day. To your point, Steve, maybe it just ultimately just, you know, that upward movement that continued splitter driving underneath that curb ended up failing the curb. What a, you know, what a disaster. I mean, just. That's a metal what, curbing, and look how it's peeled back. These cars, these 3,400 pound cars, just tore that metal curbing and peeled it completely back. Incredible amount of damage here to the curbing. They've pulled the entire curbing out now, and they're sliding it away. See the damage to the dark blue square rectangle there, where it literally peeled the metal up and back uh, when those cars were coming through. Back up through the gears they go. How will the braking zone work when they get to turn number one? We're mere seconds away, three and four wide as they go to dive into turn number one. Denny Hamlin goes on defense. Kyle Larson comes flying around the outside. Kurt Busch is there as well. Now it'll be Larson that'll slip. Hamlin will go through. Briscoe to Benedetto. Kyle Larson having a hard time negotiating one and two. They are jammed up that mid pack but it's Denny Hamlin that'll break free in the muck and the mire in turns two and three, and he will pick up the lead. Briscoe with him in second. Here comes back to Benedetto. He wants third, but he's got to get around A.J. Allmendinger to do it. Bubba Wallace on first. One of the cars spinning, leaving turn six. More contact on the straightaway, and there's more calamity on the back straightaway. Cars everywhere on the back straight. 
Austin Dillon, hard contact. That was the result of that curve. Looks like Michael McDowell with the car that got spun around. Redick, the jump. so much damage to the front end of his car. Knock the radiator out of that thing. Guys hadn't seen the racetrack in this configuration. Through here side by side. See Bubba Wallace, he bails out. But huge jump right there by McDowell. Just, they haven't been through this track like this before without that curb. This causes all these issues. It's easy to say, well, you know it's there, but vision just isn't what you think it is when you're following other cars. Watch these cars hit it. Blaney hit it a little bit. Further back, look at that launch. Round he goes. Crazy. See Cole Custer in the wall. The teammates, Austin Dillon with big damage. 23 above a Wallace. I think he knows he's not going to make the corner. Goes driver's right. 34 spins around right there. Big contact by the three. I think that's LaJoy getting a little bit of contact as well. Here comes Redick in the picture. Already heavy damage. Almendinger in the 16 on the inside of row two. Once again, hard on the gas. Across the yard of bricks. Two laps to go from Indy. A great restart for Denny Hamlin. Here he comes into turn one. Chase Briscoe's going to give him a run for the money. Here's Briscoe to the outside, but he's going to be offline. No, again. Oh, Briscoe's in the grass. Now it's a battle for the lead with Hamlin and Almendinger. Briscoe will come back onto the grass. And now he will be side by side with Denny Hamlin. Briscoe getting forced off course with a piece of debris that went flying off the race car when it happened, but they're back on course. Battle for the lead. Well, now exits turn five and six, and Brian Newman gets the curving in turn six. Down the back straightaway, there's smoke out of the, set, out of the 11 car. It's all clear now, though. He leads him into seven. Briscoe right on his tail. We'll have to see how NASCAR. Stop and go. 14 has a oh, stop, stop and go, go for the 14 him. car. He is not racing for the win. Oh, he's going to spin Denny. Denny is spun out. The 14 car spun Denny Hamlin out into turn 10. That puts A.J. Allmendinger in the lead because Briscoe will have to serve a penalty. He did not enter back onto the racetrack the way that you're supposed to. So A.J. Allmendinger is going to be the leader right here. Ryan Blaney right behind him. Kyle Larson behind him. Can Kyle Larson run him back down? Briscoe missed the turn. A.J. Allmendinger, he's in front. Ryan Blaney running in the second spot. And yes, Kyle Larson is right back in it in the five. Coming up on one lap to go. One more time around. Larson taps the wall when he comes out of 14. In front, A.J. Allmendinger trying to grab another win. He'll be his first at Indianapolis. Blaney they, running second. Here they come for the final time into turn number one. Does A.J. Allmendinger have enough to get it back to the start-finish line and win at the Brickyard? He'll lead Ryan Blaney by two car lengths, by three car lengths. As further back, they begin to stack up. They clear turns three and four as Right now, A.J. Allmendinger will take it through turns five and six for the final time this afternoon in Indianapolis. A.J.'s well clear of second place, Ryan Blaney. The battle really is for third and fourth. Blaney clear now of Larson down here in seven. No lockups on the 16 car. He gets into seven clean, heads into turn eight. Going back and forth. He's worked all day to put himself in this position. Leaving turn 10 with about a six car lead lead over Ryan Blaney. Blaney under attack. AJ Allmendinger, driver from Colleg Racing. Colleg Racing going full time cup racing Eight next back. year. Eight they have no wins in the Xfinity's in the cup series. AJ Allmendinger, just a few more corners to get on their first win. AJ Allmendinger could come here and pull off the most amazing win of his career at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Another chapter written into the Indy history books. A.J. Allmendinger will cross the yard of bricks, the winner of the first ever road course race for the Cup Series. <laughs> Let's go!